Hey, what's going on, everybody? Do you remember in 2017, Professor Avi Loeb from Harvard University, when he said that that interstellar uh, visitor, remember, they weren't sure if it was a comet, an asteroid, but he believed it was an interstellar object. He said it could be an alien probe. Remember that, right? It was 2017. Yeah, this, is, this is what it looked like right? Well, yesterday, for some reason, um, the Space Command classified documents that, um, let me see what I can pull up here. So yesterday, in a tweet, where is it? Right here. This is from the U.S. Space Command. Now, I'm not going to read through all of this. Basically, in 2014, before, oh, and that rock, this one, that was called a muamua, right? I forgot exactly what the translation means. It's a Hawaiian thing, but um, that's what it was named. Before a muamua, which was in 2017, there was a rock, um, an interstellar rock, right? And the space command, it was classified, why didn't, and it actually, they believe it crashed into the Pacific Ocean. And it was a very small rock, one or two feet. And a lot of people think, well, there's no way it hit the Earth because it's that small. It had to burn up in the atmosphere. That's not necessarily true. A lot of them make it through every day. We just don't know about all of them, right? And for some reason, I'm still not sure why they had to classify this. Why didn't they let us know that an interstellar meteor hit the Earth in 2014, right? Which is bothersome. And what happened was um, Avi Loeb and uh, let me see, what's the professor's name here? Let me bring something up here so I can show you this. Um, Amir... Here, let me show you something. Sorry, I know I'm all over the place. This is the actual paper from Amir Sharak and Abraham Loeb, Avi Loeb. This is um, the actual paper they made about that asteroid, that meteor. Let me put it that way, that meteor in 2014. But it was supposed to be reviewed, like peer-reviewed and everything, and it just never went anywhere the government decided to classify it. And st I still don't know why. I've been looking all over, and the excuses are just strange. Nothing worth talking about, right? But going back now, because the way I have this all set up, so they released a letter, and you can see it's confirming. Um, it says 99.9% .9 that it is an interstellar object. Avi Loeb and... Um, I'm sorry, what's his name? Uh, Amir Sharak. They believe this came from like another star system. I mean, of course, that's just speculative, but they're just speculating on that. But they it interstellar meaning that it came from another part on outside of our solar system. Okay, so it came from, they believe, like farther out on the arm of the Milky Way, right? And it is a big deal because... Um, and here, and this is what they believe, where it landed. Um, this is out. Um, now, I'm not sure if this, they said the Pacific Ocean or the Indian Ocean. I'll double check that for you. Let me bring you over to my monitor so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, because I have a bunch of the stories up here. It says secret government info confirms first known interstellar object on Earth. And now they're... Um, the professors, they are looking to get an expedition going to see if they can actually recover this data. And you may be thinking, wow, if it crashed into the ocean, how are they going to find this stuff? How do they know where to look? Well, recently, which is going to be an upcoming video that I was, I, I just haven't had time to work on it. Recently, the government, uh, the Space Force, has given NASA full access to all their sensor data, the fireball reports from 1988 through 2022. And these are all the fireballs since then, right? But what makes this um, asteroid that we're talking about here um, 
special also is if we come down here into the database and oh that's the uh, kilotons this happened in 2014 i'm going to say all and let's just scroll real quick to 2014 sorry i don't mean to make you dizzy this happened january 2014 one eight twenty fourteen. Now, if you look at this line right here, right, this line, this is the velocity, right? Um, I believe it's kilometers per second. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's do something. Let's just go up and look. Kilometer velocity is kilometers per second, right? So this is usually the, the average you see. You see anywhere between like 15 to 18 and 19, like that, 20 and also, you see that too, right? And just to show you something, I'm going to bring this up, this little app I downloaded, right? Just to show you the velocity. So here we have kilometers, uh, kilometers per second converted into miles per, uh, miles per hour. So let's just do the top one, 20.6. That equals 46,000 miles per hour, right? So, I mean... We can do more like here. We'll just say let's do 23. What is 23? 23 is 51,500 miles an hour. But what was special about the one in 2014 is. Sorry, let me just go here. I should have kept it there. Here on one eight was look at the number here. 44.8 kilometers per second. What does that mean? Let's put that in. Traveling over a hundred thousand miles per hour. All right, and I still would like to know why they classified this. But anyway, that was actually the first interstellar object was in 2014, traveling over a hundred thousand miles per hour. But this made me curious because when I looked at this, because sometimes, you know, you always see the averages like this, averaging between 16 and 20 kilometers per second. I never pay attention to it too much, but now I will because yesterday I decided, let me scroll through and see. I found one here, 35. But as I go up, look at this one. On July 4th, 2015, 49 kilometers per second, right? Remember, this one is 100,000 miles, and they made a big thing about that. So nearly 110,000 miles. What was this on July 4, 2015? I've been looking through, because here, this is, I, I want to show you something. So this is what we do. This is our coordinates, right? So let's do this. Actually, I don't have to copy it. Actually, we have it saved already, but we're going to put it in anyway. Let's do this. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's just take one of these stories right here. This was the post. Let's see. Paste and search that. Let's click this. Let's see where this is. Those coordinates are China. That's where, and when we go back to the Fireballs app, uh, database, I'm sorry, I should have just hit the thing on the side to go up much quicker. All right, so when looking over China and everything, I could I looked everywhere. I couldn't find for the life of me anywhere in the area. Wait, is that it? Yeah, this is it right here. You know something? I searched for hours yesterday and I couldn't find it. But that's it. What was this ball? And it says it's 0.18 kilotons. That's traveling 110,000 miles an hour. I'll tell you what. I'm going to follow up on this one. I'm going to find out what that was. I mean, it was a fireball. Possible it was a hypersonic missile. Hmm. And you know what? While I'm at it, matter of fact, I did all that. Let me bring something up real quick while we're at it, right? Because I always say on Wednesdays I want to do the... Um, Next five asteroid approaches. But look at this whopper. 160 feet. Size of a plane. That's 656,000 miles away, which isn't too far at all. Another one, 41 feet. 348,000 miles away. Look at this whopper. 290 feet. It's a building size. And not a building like the size of a one-story, two-story house. 
It's the size of a skyscraper they're showing here. And also, let me see something. If I could bring something up for you. Um, you know, so what I did was I figured this is what I'm going to do because, you know, when I update you on Wednesdays about like the next five asteroids that are passing, like if I don't do an update every day, then the next six days all go out the window. They don't know anything or whatever. And sometimes they're close and I don't want to just make a video to say, hey, one's going to pass by really close. You know what I mean? So what I did was now I, I'm taking a screenshot every single day and just to show you because some of these things are big and look at this. This is one and a half million miles away and that's not far when it comes. I'm telling you it's not far. Um, it sounds it to us because we think about it here on Earth like when we drive and everything. But in space, things can change. That's big, 320 foot. That's a big one, right? So what I'm going to do is that was April 4th. This was April 5th. Look at this one. We have a 30-footer that was just under 80,000 miles away. This one, 138,000 miles away. Um, April 6th, another one. Uh, oh, no, I think that was the same one. Let me see some. Is that GN1? Yeah, GN1. Those are the same ones. I don't know why. Oh, no, I, I know why. I'm not going to go into the whole story. That wasn't a mistake. That's just how it was. Uh, these are relatively small, April 7th. Let me see something here. Uh, all This one, 140,000 miles. There's a lot. Oh, and by the way, right, I'm going to test something right now. We'll do it live. Look at this one. Four and a half million miles away, 690 feet. It's the size of a stadium. 690 feet. The size of a stadium passed by, right? And what do we have here? It's the same thing. And that's all with that, right? I want to show you something. Let me see. It could be wrong. But let's click on this one, right? This 160 foot. I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for. This is the... St here we go. This is what's scary, right? You see, when... So when you go, when you're on this page, the next five asteroids, when you see the asteroid name right next to it, the little link you click, it's going to take you to the small body database lookup on the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA's website. When you scroll down on the miscellaneous details, these details have some important information. And that important information is first op observed, observation used. So that's basically when they first seen it when it was first seen found this is april i think that says april 8th it looks a little blurry on this end 4 8 that's only five days ago right so here let's do something let's close this and come back here let's test this one this gp3 a different one 4 6 what i'm getting at is the average in finding four, let's see when this big one, when was this first located? This is three, almost 300 feet. All right, so this was March 27th, so that's real close. The average in finding four new ones every day, okay? So when we go and see that Eyes on Asteroids website where it shows you all the live asteroids that we have mapped out in our solar system and it looks crazy and they're all going around and it's going month by month that's only a what we know we're finding four new every day and the more telescopes we put online we're going to find that many more and please stay tuned um i told you i was working on a series and I had to change it because I was throwing a curveball. I was going to go over the Planetary Defense Conference that they have every two years, which is um, uh, every two years, and the last two were 2019 and 2021. Well, they just had a tabletop desktop exercise two months ago, this year. 
And I, there was no like announcement. I didn't hear about it, anything. And I always get those newsletters. And there's a lot of, and I figured I'll go over that one with you instead of the old ones because now there's more up-to-date information. So there's no purpose of me going over an older one when I could just go over the most current. So we're going to go over that. And basically what it's going to cover is it's going to go over how NASA is addressing all this stuff, not just the DART mission, the redirection tests. We're going to go over what's the plan, like um, how we're looking to find these things, what we have in the works to find them, how we're researching them, what, what can we do, what will be the um, in populated areas, what would be the damage, right? What's the plan for evacuations, which be interesting but I'm getting to that it's just like I said when I was almost all the way through it I found that Lewis conference and I just said it makes no sense for me to tell everybody about stuff from 2021 when I could give you the most updated conference that just happened a month or so ago so just bear with me Uh, I'm gonna try to get that done this weekend but um, stay tuned for that because it's important. And I'm actually, I got to be honest, I'm, I'm happy of what I'm seeing also on things because and it makes me nervous too because they're taking it real serious now. There's a lot going on, all right? And if you notice lately, maybe it's just something that when you start talking about something, you start noticing it more. But everything is, you keep hearing every other day if you read in the news about another asteroid coming by or this one. Have you noticed that? And I'm not saying that as a, like a, a conspiracy theory or something. I'm just saying as a fact, you're hearing this every other day and they're discovering at least four new ones every single day. And here, and we'll do one more quick check, right? Come in here. Let's check this one, GL4. This one, look, was found first observed April 10th. Three days ago, that was Sunday. Almost every one we look was just been in the last five days. Only the other one was March 27th. But this is what I'm getting at. A lot of, and the thing that gets me is they're on the close approach list and we're just spotting them. And I'm sorry, when there's people that say, oh, that just will burn up in the atmosphere. A lot of times they do, but a lot of times they don't. And the thing is, it may not make it to ground, but an air burst of something. Remember the one in Russia in 2013, that thing was, that that thing exploded 5,000 miles up, okay? And it was a six around a 60 plus foot, I think it was 50 to 65 foot size. And it blew out windows for miles and miles, injured over 1,600 people, and it exploded five miles up in the air. Okay? Five miles of 5,000. I forgot. It was pretty, it was way high up. I'm sorry about that. I just, I don't want to misquote that. If I can, I'll put it in the description. And, or actually, when I edit this, I'm going to find out what the size is. And let me see what time is it here. Uh, 18 minute mark, I'll, I'll put it in here because I don't want to be incorrect. I don't want to give you wrong information. But anyhow, that's the deal. I'm going to put a link to this paper from Avi Loeb and Abraham um, Amir Sharak. Um, I, I think it's a good read. And I'll put a couple of links also to um, the Twitter stuff with the um, U.S. Space Command with this letter that they wrote to NASA to, to Dr. Z um, about this claim and saying that, yeah, this this media that hit in 2014 was 99.9% it was interstellar, which is really amazing because if they go find the pieces from that, who knows what kind of properties are in that stuff. And I'll tell you what, they're really looking to mine asteroids. Uh, I, I prefer to um, block them from hitting us, but they're looking to mine these things so you remember if you've seen that movie avatar remember that they were mining for stuff for that i forgot what it was called but you remember the the um, the rock that 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 um mineral 
Well, that's what they're looking to do. And these asteroids are so-called worth hundreds of billions of trillions of dollars. That's what they're worth. We're going to find out. Um, anyway, stay tuned for that um, um, NASA table uh, desktop um, exercise that they just recently did. Uh, it's important information, and you should know to uh, find out like what the protocols are going to be with all the emergency things like FEMA and all that stuff. Like if, let's say, we have confirmation that there would be an impact, this is going to go over and show you exactly what's supposed to transpire, all right? And it gives us a heads up of what we can do, what we need to do, and not wait on anybody. So anyway, with that being said, I already babbled on for 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Till next time, thank you.